Our next speaker, Sandra Lopez, is a VP at Intel Sport, responsible for partnering with the sport industry to deliver the next generation storytelling platform, Immersive Media. Her team is focused on leading the business, marketing, and market development efforts for both Intel Sports and Intel Studios. Previously, she worked in Intel New Technology Group, leading and managing the fashion wearable business. Earlier with Intel, Sandra held various roles within corporate marketing. She won the San Francisco Marketer That Matter Award, and in 2015, Latina Style named her one of the top 10 Latina executives in the country. She is an active member of several organizations focused on both women and Latino advancement, including the Hispanic Leadership Council and Pay It Forward program. Her main concern is building the next generation of female leaders. Please give a round of applause to Sandra Lopez. Can I take this? Well, good morning. It's such an honor to be amongst the uh, sea of leaders and, more importantly, future CEOs. Um, I have stories, and I have a story. However, I have a micro story that I wanted to share with you in the context of who you are and who you're going to become. Arguably, um, I'm often asked, you know, how do I deal in corporate America? Was I dealt a bad hand? And the reason why I get asked that is, I am a Mexican-American, bicultural. My family never went to college, so when I was filling out my college uh, uh, applications, they didn't know how to advise me. When I decided to go into corporate America, they were like, we can't help you, mija. And so being a bicultural, kind of figuring it out on your way, you know, was that a disadvantage? And then a working parent. You know, the reality is when, you ha when you're a working parent as a woman, whether in a startup or a large corporation, as soon as that bump starts to come out, you know what I get asked all the time? Are you gonna come back? Are you gonna give it your 100% like you're giving it today? And I sit there, I'm like, why aren't men being asked the same question, right? So I try to flip the script and I ask my fellow male colleagues when, they, when I know they're having a kid, I'm like, are you gonna give it your all? Are you gonna show up? Because I get that all the time. So, but it's a, it's, it's, it's a disadvantage. It's an unlevel playing field and that is a reality. And then, to top everything off, I am five feet two inches. <laughs> So imagine being five feet, two inches in the world of sports, that you're dealing with basketball players that are six feet, 10 inches, or football players, right? And I, it was interesting, I was at a conference a couple years ago, and this young female came up to me, and she's like, I'm your height. And have you ever felt like a disadvantage? And I was like, sitting there like, you're the first one that told me that. So I never felt that I actually had a disadvantage around my height. And so the question is, I kept on asking, like, okay, I'm a female, my height, which I never made it an issue. And now I'm facing myself in a triple male world. I'm in the tech industry, which very few are females. And I thought that the numbers, the stats were bad. And now I'm in sports and entertainment. I'm like, oh God, I thought technology was bad. Now I'm in the sports entertainment industry. Um, how am I gonna survive? And you look at the stats, the stats that we have in sports, 3% of us females are in the management ranks. Then in tech, 3% Latinos. Then in business, 19% of women are represented. And in the executive ranks, there's 3.9% of women in color. And I call myself the three percenter because it's 3% across the board when, I rep when, I, when you look at my background. And so as I look at this, I tend to flip the narrative. I can say to myself, this is all a disadvantage. But what about if we look at the world differently? Well, the reality is, I represent 50% of the population. Think about that. We represent 50% of the population. And more females are earning college degrees than men we are equally, if not more, educated than our male counterparts. And so I take that as an opportunity to help influence 
the industries that I'm in, in sports, media, and entertainment, because the following are the stats. When I get challenged in the sports industry, I'm like, 45% of your fan base are females. In MBA, it's actually increasing. 30% are females. And in MLS, 34% are Hispanics. Latinos are really into soccer. And so I use that as an opportunity to help drive influence and business within my organization. And I want to share with you two stories. I call it the handshake. Totally different experiences, yet result in one common learning that I had. My CEO, I was doing the uh, wearable business in fashion, and asked me, hey, Sondra, whatever you did in that business, I want you to come and do it for sports, media, entertainment. And so as I was expanding and getting to know the sports ecosystem, I had the opportunity to visit one of our potential partners. And I was the responsible person, the business general manager, making the decision. We go, we go to New York, along with three of my fellow colleagues within my organization, one happens to be my manager. We're sitting there and we're waiting, waiting for our, our fellow partners to show up and open the door and take us to the executive room. And we're talking and we're preparing and I prepared in advance, my team was prepared, we knew our negotiations, our gives and gets, when, when will we decide to not move forward with the deal. And the gentlemen's come out from the overall partnership, they shook the hands of every single person but me. And it never happened to me in my entire career. So I wasn't prepared for this. I was like, OK, I'm here. Like, I know I'm short, but I'm here. Uh, I'm like, OK. So I said, hello, I'm Sandra Lopez. I'm responsible for the Intel Sports Wearable Division. We go in, and we sit down. And conversation continues. I tend to sit myself in the middle of boardrooms. I do that intentionally because we talk about inclusiveness and that's how I can project my perspective of making sure that everybody's included and I'm not better than somebody else. I tend not to set myself in the very top of the uh, head of the table. And I was sitting there and they were all talking amongst themselves and I knew they weren't going to pay attention to me. And I, re I recall an advice of a female executive um, when I was starting my career. She's like, you have to work harder, you have to be smarter, than your male counterparts. So I was trying to figure out an opportunity. I'm like, where can I ask a challenging question that everybody would like go, aha. Uh -huh. and, and it was really hard because I do like to have conversations. I'm a social person by nature. So it was the first time I'm like, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut and I'm gonna wait till that point in time where I can actually ask a smart question that everybody will pause and look at me. 10 minutes went by, 20 minutes went by. I'm like, oh shit, I'm almost out of time. And it was like 40 minutes into the conversation, and I, I kind of figured out everybody's position, including my company, and I asked the question. They all looked at me like, well, why didn't you bring that up before? I'm like, well, actually, um, and I didn't make it a big deal. I'm like, I was just trying to understand everybody's position, and I thought this was the best time to bring the conversation forward. We went forward. The conversation ended. We got up. We walked out the door, and I remember this vividly. My boss said, Sandra, did you see how they treated you? They completely ignored you. And it was that point in time where I had the most vulnerable moment of my, one of my most vulnerable moments of my career. And I sat there, I'm like, should I tell him how he made me feel? It wasn't the partners, it was him. He never gave me that platform. And I'm like, if I tell him, will that affect my performance review? And so I chose to be vulnerable enough. I said, do you know how you made me feel? And he's like, what? I go, you never introduced me. You never gave me the platform. And actually, while I work for you, I'm the decision maker. And he said, I didn't know. And that was a teachable moment. So when we talk about speaking up, there's different ways of speaking up. You're speaking up in terms of being so comfortable with your vulnerability to highlight to a colleague of yours of how he or she's making you feel. And you gotta find those right moments. I knew at that moment, in that conference, in that negotiation, it wasn't the right moment. Yet I knew I wasn't gonna walk away and let him feel how he made me feel. And we talk about inclusiveness. I was in that room, I was included. Did they make me feel like I belong? And so this whole diversity inclusion that we talk about, I like to say diverse groups, make sure you're included, but you can be in the room, but are you making people feel like they belong? That is so critical. 
That was one handshake. A week later, I had to meet new partners as well in the sports industry. And what happened there was um, I was prepared for the same thing to happen. Go up the elevators, male colleagues again, and they, um, four males in the, um, on the partner side, and they, sh they said, hello, Sandra, nice to meet you. They read up about me. They included me in the conversation day one. And it was a completely different experience. It was super productive. And what, what I learned from them is that they understood the role that females were going to have in the sports industry. And, but that also built a relationship. Like these, these gentlemen, they can be my allies. I'm struggling in the sports industry. How do I make a presence in, a, in an industry that it's all about relationships? So that meeting ended up successful. And then I followed up with them and I said, you know what? You're the first group of individuals that made me feel like I belong. Can I partner with you to help me understand how to navigate this complex ecosystem? I'm new to sports. Yes, I played sports when I was in high school, but I do not know the influencers. And I know for me to be successful within my role, I need to know how the industry works. They join me on my journey. They check up on me. They connected me with some of the most influential people within the sports industry to help me accelerate my career. And so in those two experiences, what I learned was trust. Trust in you. Trust that you're in that company for a reason. They hired you. Trust that you have value to add on this planet. And you have to deep, dig really deep and do not be afraid to speak up. And I tell people, speak up. But sometimes it's about how you choose to speak up and the words you choose to use. And then trust that you have allies, male and females. And I always tell people, like this whole hashtag me too and the bashing around men and the importance of partnerships, 60% of my success has been through my network. Of that 60%, 80% have been men. And so they are out there. You have to seek them out. And you know what? They're not afraid to have the dinner with you. You know, the ones that are afraid to have dinners with you, I don't know. There's something else going on. <laughs> but let me tell you, the male allies exist, and you're going to have to proactively seek them out. And people are like, how do, you, how do you seek them out? I go, you know what? They're executives within your company. Or they're people that you may admire. And look at your network. See how they can connect with you. And when you do connect with them, have a purpose. Have an agenda. right? Don't waste their time. Our times are very valuable. I always say, like, I live by the minute, not by the hour. So if you're going to want to meet with me or you want to meet with a male, uh, a male counterpart, just make sure you understand what that intent is. And for us females in the room, it's a tough world and we make it tougher on each other. I'm telling you, as you climb up the ranks, people are going to sabotage you. Let's stop doing that, because as much as we blame the men, we should blame it each other, and we should help each other up, uh, raise each other up, and make sure that, you know what, if you make it to the CEO position, and I don't, I should applaud you and celebrate you, because you're going to make it easier for these two young girls that are sitting right here on the right-hand side. So thank you very much.